The richest developer in crypto has a net worth of $44 billion. He made all of his money thanks to his technical skills and without any business connection. In this video, we will go over the list of the 5 richest developers in crypto and we'll try to learn as much as we can from their journey so that maybe one day you can be part of this list. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Idoblogs I teach blockchain development. Charles Hoskinson is the founder of the Calano blockchain. He has net worth estimated between 500 to 600 million dollars. Charles is 33 years old, is an American citizen and lives in the US. Before working on Calano, Charles Hoskinson briefly worked for Ethereum at the very beginning of the project. Because of a disagreement between him and Vitalik Buterin, he left Ethereum and to this day there is still some rivalry between the two. Charles has a very solid technical background, he studied mathematics and if you check out his github you will see that he used to be a very active coder using some pretty hardcore languages like Haskell even though we haven't seen any activity for the past few years. Vitalik Buterin is the creator of Ethereum. He has a net worth of $1.1 billion, mainly thanks to his Ether holdings. Vitalik is 27 years old, is a Canadian citizen and lives in Singapore. As one of the co-creators of Ethereum, he had an allocation of a few hundred thousand Ether. He cashed out some of it a few years ago, but kept most of it in Ether. Because Vitalik is such a high profile figure in the industry, many projects send him some tokens for free, hoping it will create some buzz. One of these projects is Shiba. A few months ago, Vitalik received a large amount of Shiba tokens, which temporarily increased his net worth to a hoping $21 billion. Vitalik wasn't interested at all in these tokens and wanted to make it clear that he wasn't associated in any way to the Shiba project. That's why he got rid of all of his Shiba tokens and in the end his net worth decreased from $21 billion to quote unquote only $1.1 million. Vitalik was quite young when he created Ethereum and before that he started his career in crypto by running the Bitcoin magazine which is a blog about crypto. He started to work on the white paper of Ethereum in 2013 and launched the network in 2015. Even though he is credited for being the creator of Ethereum, it's important to understand that he's not the one who coded the first implementation of Ethereum. This was done by someone else called Gavin Wood the founder of a blockchain company called Parity Technologies. And this is an interesting thing about Vitalik. A lot of people think that he's some sort of genius coder, but that's not the case. He does know how to code, of course, but where he really shines is in his ability to quickly find solutions to complex conceptual problems and suggest an implementation to coders. Cheng Penja, often abbreviated CZ, is the founder and CEO of Binance, one of the biggest crypto exchange. He has a net worth of $1.9 billion, mainly thanks to his 25% stake in Binance shares. CZ is 44 years old, he is a Chinese and Canadian citizen and lives in Singapore. Before creating Binance, CZ did many things in his career. He used to work as a developer for stock exchanges, working on all the books. He also created a software company that does a software for stock exchanges and a few years ago he leveraged all of his knowledge on stock exchanges to create a Binance which became one of the fastest growing company in the world. If you check out his github you won't find much activity but because he worked on all the books for stock exchanges I'm pretty sure he is a very good coder. This kind of work usually requires you to have a very low latency and to use some low level languages like C++ so it's quite likely that CZ is a really really good coder. Brian Armstrong is the co-founder and CEO of Coinbase. He has a net worth of $13.5 billion based on his 20% stake of Coinbase shares. Brian Armstrong is 38 years old, is an American citizen and lives in the US. To get started, Brian Armstrong and his co-founder were accepted in the YC Combinator program in 2012. Coinbase grew quickly and received funding from top VCs until Coinbase reached the status of unicorn when it went public this year. And this is when Brian Armstrong reached the astronomical level of $13.5 billion of net worth. Before this, Brian Armstrong used to be a developer working for big companies like IBM and Airbnb. When you check out his GitHub, you see some activity, mostly in high-level languages like Ruby or JavaScript, but you have to go back to 2017 to see the last time he pushed some code. And as the CEO of a big company like Coinbase, that's pretty understandable that he moved away from coding. 
I think he used to be a decent caller, but I don't put him on the same category as someone like Charles Hoskinson, for example, or CZ. Satoshi Nakamoto is the creator of Bitcoin and has a net worth of $44 billion. When Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin, he gave himself an allocation of 1 million Bitcoin and at today's valuation, it's equivalent to $44 billion. We don't know much about Satoshi Nakamoto except that he or she released the white paper of Bitcoin in 2008 and produced an initial code base of Bitcoin in C++. Satoshi Nakamoto is not your average developer. He is very knowledgeable in cryptography and in low-level programming. There are many people who pretend to be Satoshi Nakamoto, but none of them have proved their claims. What can we learn from these guys? First, we can see a pattern in how they became rich. There are two ways. Either they created a company and got rich with their shares, or they created a blockchain and got rich with their initial coin allocation. This is very important to understand. You start by working as a developer, and later, once you have more experience, you go on to create your own crypto project. And that's when you can become really rich in crypto as a developer. Then you also have to realize that it really took some time for these guys to become successful. And if you analyze how their wealth grew, you will realize it was exponential. It wasn't linear. It means don't panic if your income doesn't increase fast enough. If you stay in this industry long enough and you are hardworking, at some point it will pay off and most of your gain will come later in your career. You just have to be patient. And the last lesson of this video is that also all of these guys are developers. Not all of them are hardcore coders who started coding when they were kids. For example, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase, didn't strike me as a hardcore coder. Even Vitalik Buterin isn't a hardcore coder. And the more interesting example is Hayden Adams, the creator of Uniswap. He learned coding only in 2017, just before starting to work on Uniswap. And it didn't prevent him from creating the top decentralized exchange protocol. So to sum up this video, remember that you need to be a coder if you want to be successful in crypto. But at the same time, you can absolutely start learning blockchain development as a beginner. And as a beginner, the first thing is to understand how a blockchain works. And for this, you can check out this video on my channel. I will see you there.